Okay, welcome to this lesson slash discussion about vocabulary. This is a topic that comes up in literally every single lesson I teach and often gets asked before it's it's mentioned by me. Uh, pretty much every student I've ever had asks the same question about vocabulary and flow. How do you flow around the drums? How do you get rid of that hesitancy? Um, other people will say, I don't know what to play when it comes to fills. Um, if I've ever if I'm ever thrown a solo in any form, I don't know what to play. And these are people at various levels across different genres that they specialize in. Some will be professional players, um, some will be hobbyists. Literally everybody, to some degree, has a fear um, about expressing themselves, uh, and it, particularly when it's anything improvised. And someone might say at a at a rehearsal or at a gig, "Hey, why don't you play?" Um, a solo up front in front of this song or someone might turn around and, and start playing a vamp and ask you to solo. Um, it could just be uh, what to play at the end of a song when you get the big pause and the big high energy situation. I don't know what to play. Lots of different situations. Um, so drummers are so comfortable here and it literally, as soon as you do this, they don't know what to play and they panic. Like this is okay, this is not okay. And, and it's so... Uh, perplexing to me that so many drummers have these issues and think this way, that I'm a drummer, I'm a timekeeper, this is my job to keep time and this is home base and this is fine and this isn't. And it's the same thing. There's no difference. It's all rhythm and dynamics. As drummers, we don't have melody and harmony to deal with. We have it extremely easy compared to other instruments. We just have rhythm and dynamics. So all you need to do really is get inside each note rate that's available to you at different tempos, which for the most part in most people's um, bands and the, the popular music and the things that they'll be playing is actually a very small group of note rates um, because it will, and it will certainly often be excluding five, sevens and nines. And so you really just need to get inside each one and be comfortable expressing yourself and improvising in each one at, at a, whatever tempo it is and then put, putting them all together. So I want to talk today about, um, about that and some, give you some exercises to help with this and get away from um, shoehorning licks into your playing and building your own vocabulary, which is something I talk about in my school a lot. So let's get into that. But first, just a quick note from today's video sponsor. Okay, we're back. So Let's talk about why do we need vocab, because a lot of drummers don't practice soloing. They think it's soloing. It's not soloing. It's expressing yourself. It's thinking in different rhythmic phrases. Um, it's just vocabulary. It's speaking, just like you want to have a good vocabulary in English, in life, so you can talk on different subjects. It's not a bad thing to have that. And so, yes, your job as a drummer is to be a timekeeper and to provide the feel um, and rhythmic information for the band to play on top of and make the song work. And a lot of times we're just playing simple beats with a few fills. But there are lots of different genres, not just jazz and fusion and improvised music. There are lots of genres where you do need more information from the drummer. The drummer often provides the excitement and the energy. So you could be in a rock and roll situation or a blues situation. Um, you, where the guitarist turns around to you and he's soloing, he or she is soloing, and they want more energy from the drummer. Um, I've been at gigs like a, uh, with very famous blues guitarists where it's a mixture between songs where he's singing uh, and then more kind of improvised bluesy rock stuff where they're improvising and they're trading fours and the drummer just couldn't, had no, he had a nice feel and he probably maybe considered himself a groove player. But when it came to like talking to the guitar player, providing more energy and excitement. He had no tools to do that. Um, you could be in a simple pop situation where there are fills that are needed, punctuation marks from the drums, fills into the chorus, into the bridge, into the key change, out of sections. And without those, the, the, it falls flat. The, the, the new section uh, doesn't sound right. So you need those punctuation marks and you need vocabulary to do that. And also... Even in uh, pop, popular music genres where, yes, everybody's playing parts, the drummer actually often, especially in live situations, has more liberty than the other instruments for improvising. So the fill you play into the bridge, into the key change, whatever it might be, 
doesn't have to be the same every time and it's often improvised. Yes, it won't be flashy chops and crazy fast. It will be appropriate for that section. But as the drummer, we have liberty to improvise. So you want to uh, be able to have uh, vocabulary and, and to think on the fly and not have a set number of fills that you can shoehorn in. The groove drummer thing is such a ridiculous phrase to me. I don't understand that concept. And I remember Vinnie Colaiuta talking about this in an interview, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said something to the effect of like when someone says, oh, I'm just a groove drummer, he, his response, well, I should hope so. Like, what else would you be? Every genre you want to be that. But Vinny and Gad are two good examples of how they will be a groove drummer with James Taylor, but then also with Chick Corea, which uh, uh, require two very different types of input in terms of how much information they put out. And I remember also Chick Corea saying he doesn't like stagnant grooves. So he likes information. He doesn't want just consistent, the same thing over and over. So that means that, you know, you need more vocabulary. So that's just a little uh, word about that. Uh, to finish it, underplaying is just as bad as overplaying. That's another way to put it. So everyone's always worried about overplaying. And when I was younger, when people used to say, play for the song, play for the song, I always thought that meant play less. And if you're a musical drummer, it meant you played less. But I, when I used to record my gigs and my playing, I was underplaying a lot. So whatever the genre, there are so many sections where the drummer needs to provide the punctuation marks and the uh, excitement. So with that said, how do we look at vocabulary? We don't want to look at it like shoehorning in licks that we've learned. We want to be free to just express ourselves. So whatever the tempo is, we have a set number of options as to what's going to fit in that tempo. Um, and a lot of the time it's going to be eighth notes, but often eighth notes will be too slow. So if we're at this tempo, so that's going to be appropriate for some things, but not for everything. And, and if you need more energy, it's not going to work. So uh, 16th is going to be obviously the go-to thing for most tempos. And it's interesting how many drummers can't do that. Just improvising on the snare drum with single strokes and, and uh, getting a good sound out of the drum and having good time. And time and sound is a, probably a whole separate video, but that should always be at the forefront of your mind. Um, and to make something sam simple sound great, it's all about good time and good sound. But anyway, one thing you can do is pick a note, right, like 16th notes. And we talk about this in my school, playbetterdrums.com, all the time. There's so many lessons, over 300 lessons, um, and a lot of them are on vocabulary, um, time and sound, um, drawing a good sound from the drums, but getting away from this lick mentality. So you could take one note rate, 16th. Let's take one drum, just the snare drum, and let's also take one sticking, just single strokes. And the way I think of my vocabulary... Everything's just a combination of singles and doubles. So yes, you can get into rudiments, of course. Rudiments are great for teaching you dynamics um, and control. Um, but really, everything's just a combination of singles and doubles. So you need to be comfortable in a certain note rate playing, uh, switching between singles and doubles. And I'm thinking about accents. So let's go back a step, back to the snare drum, just single strokes and improvising using accents. So I'm only thinking of the accents and I'm filling in with the ghost notes that are not accents, but because it's single strokes, it's obviously we don't really have to think about that too much. So left foot plays quarter notes, and we're just trying to improvise, make it interesting, try not to repeat ourselves too much. But on the other hand, we want to play musical phrases. And what does that mean? It means playing things that the listener, and you're also the listener in this situation, can latch onto and understand. So imagine someone standing outside the room listening to you play, can, and they're a non-musician even, let alone a non-drummer, they're a non-musician. Can they understand what you're talking about? So question and answer phrases, a few repetitive things. So let's try that, let's try that.
So when you first try this, it will feel awkward. A lot of students that do this immediately throw in some drags and uh, buzzes and 30-second notes and triplets and extra little things that they're so used to playing without thinking. And so this teaches you to really think about every note that you're playing and why are you playing it and the purpose behind every note because you're trying to think of accents and fill in with the ghost notes. You're trying to concentrate on good time, uh, not only good time with the click and the left foot quarter notes, but micro timing, you know, the 16th notes and that they're nice and even. You're trying to pull a nice sound from the drum. The rim shots are supposed to be consistent. The ghost notes super quiet. You're thinking about these accents and you're thinking about how these accents make sense. Some question and answer things. Um, you're trying to tell a little story by repeating things here and there and making it make sense. And a lot of people find that difficult. And so you can get rid of a lot of the stuff that is not necessary, that we all play without thinking. So that's the first stage. And then you would move to the rest of the drums. And so now we're still on single strokes, but now we're allowed to play the toms as well. So we're always trying to keep track of the, the one. We'd have a click going. The left foot's always playing quarter notes. And we're working on all the same things, but we're now we're allowed all these different pitches. So you have many more options. If you have four toms like this, there are millions of options, but you still want to try and make it make sense that if someone was listening outside, they would understand what you were doing and they wouldn't get bored and it wouldn't just sound like a monotonal uh, thing. Like a lot of students will do this. They won't explore. It will be monotonal with dynamics, but it will also not be interesting uh, sticking-wise or hand-wise, if you like. Like, there are so many options, and they'll end up just playing right-hand things and, and with a, not enough dynamics like this. So there are so many options. You can go back up the toms instead of descending. Um, you can do... Uh, accent patterns like this. You can do crescendos on the toms. You know, there's so many things you can do. So you want to force yourself to make it interesting because you will repeat yourself. You will think this sounds rubbish. And it's up to you with these limited uh, boundaries to make it interesting because there are so many situations in a song in in like playing situations where all you need is singles you could do an entire gig an entire show only playing fills or any vocabulary with single strokes and that would be more than enough uh let's think of a couple examples like a fill a fill into something So something high energy to start a song. A lot of drummers couldn't do that. Just That's just the snare drum, it's just single strokes, and I'm just making it up. I'm just thinking of accents that, that make sense, and I'm able to pull a, a nice sound from the drum. It could, uh, could be something else, like... Different tempo. You know, you should be comfortable just playing something on the spot because you've explored these different note rates. So we go over this in detail at Play Better Drums, my online school, but the next stage would be um, singles and doubles. So you go back to the snare drum and you play just singles and doubles and you'd, you'd explore that. And then you're back, allowed the toms again. And we haven't even touched any bass drum stuff yet. But we're really, by putting these boundaries in place, we're really zooming in on what we're playing, why we're playing it, we're able to concentrate on our time and our sound, which so many drummers overlook time and sound. I mean, I can't believe they do, but they do. And so then the final stage, if you like, or the final goal is to be able to do this with each note rate. So 16th note triplets, 8th note triplets, 32nd notes, and then put them all together. And then you're able to string phrases together throughout different note rates using dynamics with great time and great sound. And then that's not really getting into anything complicated. That's just being comfortable speaking in each note rate and moving between them 
with consistent time and a nice sound. And that was more than you will ever need. You could be an amazing world-class drummer with those skills. So then you start putting them all together. Okay, so I hope some of that stuff helps and you can take it to the drums and practice those things um, and to start thinking about vocabulary differently. In summary, we want to get away from thinking that this is a groove and this is a fill because ultimately it's all the same thing. It's just rhythm. It's just being comfortable in each note rate. And think of Steve Gadd. He was famous for playing a lot of interesting rhythms and vocabulary on hats, kick and snare. Whatever it might be, 16th notes, for example, like that was bringing the left hand up to the hi-hat. And that's what you want to be able to do. Be comfortable uh, speaking, playing in each note rate and not thinking about, well, it's here. So this is just a groove and it's here. So this is a fill. It's all the same thing. There's no separation. And Gad is another good example for someone that was incredible at making the fills feel just as good as the grooves. Most drummers struggle with that. It is hard to be playing a groove for two minutes straight, a minute straight, whatever, and then go to something else around the toms and make it feel just as good. So we want to think of everything as the same. It's just rhythm and dynamics. So I hope that helps. Um, please check out my online school, playbetterdrums.com. There's over 300 lessons, PDF worksheets, play-alongs. We get deep into this stuff, vocabulary, as well as hand technique, foot technique, and everything else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.